no singing today. But what we'll see in this video is the process of implicit differentiation, which is very useful and is actually a quite neat application of the chain rule. All right, so what have we seen so far? So we studied a whole bunch of different functions, y equals to f of x, and we've learned many differentiation rules to calculate the derivatives of such functions. Now, the geometric interpretation, as we've seen, is the following. So if I sketch the graph of a function, so I'll get something, whatever it is. And what we've learned is that if you look at the tangent line at a given point, then the slope of the tangent line here is given by the derivative y prime of the function. Okay, this is all good, but sometimes you might be interested in studying curves in the xy plane that are not actually the graph of a function. So let me give you a simple example. Suppose that we're interested in the circle. This is clearly not the graph of a function because for it doesn't pass the vertical line test. For a given x, there's going to be two y values, so it's multi-valued. But you may still ask, for example, what is the slope of the tangent line for any point on the circle? So how can you calculate these slopes? Well, first one thing you can do is write down the equation of the circles. In this case, it will be a relation between x and y. More precisely, the equation will be x squared plus y squared equals to 1 if you take the unit circle. And to calculate the slope of the tangent lines, you somehow want to calculate the derivative y prime. But how can you do that? Well, one way you could do it is to take this equation and try to solve for y. But if you do so, you end up with two solutions. So you'll first get the positive square root, and you'll get another solution, which will be the negative square root. So there's really two functions that are defined by this equation. And that makes sense, right? The positive square root gives you the upper half of the circle, while the negative square root will give you the lower half of the circle, each of which now is a well-defined function. So in other words, this relation here defines implicitly two different functions, f of x and g of x, given the two, giving the two halves of the circles. And so once you have these solutions, then you can use standard differentiation rules to calculate the derivatives and then get the slope of the tangent lines for each point on the circle. But is there a way that we can calculate the derivative y prime without having to solve first for y? All right, let me give you a third example. Consider the relation x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 6 times x times y. This is sometimes called the folium of Descartes. And you could ask, well, from alpha to sketch the curve defined by this relation, what you will get is something that looks like this. Quite complicated looking. This is clearly not the graph of a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. But you may still be interested in calculating uh, the slope of the tangent line to this curve. So one way you could do it is to try to do the same thing as we did for the circle. So namely, you can try to solve for y as a function of x here. In fact, it is possible to do so. In this case, you'll get three different solutions. So you get basically three functions that are implicitly defined by this relation. So the first function on the graph would look like something like this. Then you would get a second function on the graph that would look like this, and a third function that would look like this. So you would get three different solutions, and then you could try to find uh, to calculate the derivatives for each of these solutions. The problem is that the solution scale will be very, very complicated, much messier than the square root scale. In fact, you can ask Wolfram Alpha for fun to solve this equation, you get some really ugly looking solutions. So it would be a very, very long way of calculating the derivatives here. And in fact, sometimes it's not even possible to solve for y as a function of x. So an example of that is if you have a relation between x and y, which is a polynomial of degree 5 or higher in y, then there's a theorem by Abel and Ruffini that says that it's just impossible to solve algebraically for y as a function of x. So for the quadratic case, it was possible. There's a quadratic formula. For the cubic case, there's a messy looking formula that works. Quartic case also works, but quintic and higher is just impossible. So you will not be able to solve for y as a function of x. Another example would be if you have a relation h x of y equals to 0 that involves transcendental functions. So things like trig functions, or exponentials, or logs, then in this case, as well, you may not be able to solve 
for y as a function of x. So we need to find a way of calculating the derivative y prime without having to solve for y as a function of x. And this is exactly what implicit differentiation, which is a neat application of the chain rule, will do for us. All right, so let me first summarize what we've seen in the previous slide. So given a relation between two variables, h, x of y is equal to zero, we say that f is a function which is defined implicitly by this relation if y equals f of x does satisfy the relation for all x in the domain of f. So in other words, this relation does define a curve in the xy plane, but that may not be the graph of a function. It does, however, implicitly defines y as one or many functions of x. So we've seen a number of examples. If we go back to the folium of Descartes, this relation here does define a curve in the xy plane. The curve looked like something like that. Now this is not the graph of a function. However, as we've seen, this defines implicitly three different functions which correspond to the different branches that I had on the previous slide. And now the question is, can we calculate the slope of the tangent line at any point here? Or mathematically, can we calculate y prime directly from the relation h of x and y equals to zero? Well, the answer is yes, and this process is called implicit differentiation. So to calculate the derivative y prime given a relation h of x and y equals to zero, how do you do it? Well, the first step is to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So if two things are equal, then we know that their derivatives are also equal, so we can do that. But the key here is to realize that y here in the relation is a function of x. So whenever y appears, when you take the derivative with respect to x, you have to use the chain rule. And then the second step is to solve for y prime. So you get an equation for y prime as a function of y and x, and that will be your final result. So this process is known as implicit differentiation, and it really is just a direct application of the chain. All right, so the process of implicit differentiation will probably make more sense with an example. So consider the relation sine of xy is equal to sine of x plus sine of y. So this defines a curve in the xy plane, and you may be interested in calculating the slope of the tangent line to any point on this curve, or in other words, calculating the derivative y prime. Note that you cannot solve here for y as an explicit function of x, so you need to use implicit differentiation. All right, so the first step is to take the derivative with respect to x on both sides of the equation, remembering that y is itself a function of x. So that's what I get, and then I need to evaluate these derivatives. So let's start with the left-hand side. So this is the derivative of the sine of a function, so I need to use the chain rule. First, I get the derivative of the outer function, evaluated at the inner function, times the derivative of the inner function. On the right-hand side, this is a, a sum, so the derivative of a sum is the sum of derivatives. So first, I get the derivative of sine of x, gives me cos of x, plus the derivative with respect to x of sine of y. All right, next step. So I still have my cos of xy here. And then I need to calculate the derivative of xy. This is a product of two functions. I'm going to use the product rule. Get the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, but the derivative of x with respect to x just gives me one. On the right-hand side, I get cos of x plus, and here, this is the derivative of sine of a function, remember y is a function of x. So I need to use the chain rule here. So I first get the derivative of the outer function, which is cos evaluated at the inner function y, times the derivative of the inner function. And I'll just rewrite everything in terms of y prime, just to make things a little clearer. So I'll get x y prime plus y is equal to cos of x plus y prime cos of y. And the final step here is to solve for y prime. So I'll bring all the terms with a y prime on the left hand side. I get x y prime cos of x y minus y prime cos of y, and then all the other terms on the right hand side. So cos of x minus y cos of x y. Then I can factor out here the y prime for the two terms on the left hand side. Get the same thing on the right hand side. And finally, what I can do is now solve for y prime just by dividing both sides by the term in brackets here. So I get cos of x 
minus y of cos of xy divided by x cos of xy minus cos of y. And that would be my final answer for the derivative y prime. Now what you see here is that uh, you get y prime as a, uh, an expression in terms of x and y. So not, you don't get an explicit expression for y prime as a function of x. But that's all right because you didn't start with an explicit function neither. You start with an implicit, implicitly defined function, so a relation between x and y. So when you do implicit differentiations, you pretty much always end up with a relation for y prime in terms of x and y. All right, so that's an example of implicit differentiation. Uh, implicit differentiation is very, very useful. In fact, we'll use that to calculate the derivative of inverse functions uh, next week. But for now, you might be wondering, actually, what does this the curve defined by this relation looks like? So I actually did uh, ask Wolfram Alpha to sketch the graph of this curve, and this is what I got. So this is the curve defined by this implicit uh, by, by this relation here. So it's pretty cool. And what we've calculated here is the slope of the tangent line to any point on this curve. It's pretty awesome. And in fact, in class, we'll see even crazier looking curves. You'll see they're going to be really cool. So stay tuned.